Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to talk about projectile motion. So this is the learning objective that we need to achieve in this video. That is to describe projectile motion launched at an angle, theta, as well as special cases when theta equal to zero and theta equal to 90 degree. That is the free fall motion. Okay, so let's first understand what it means by projectile motion. So it is a motion where object travels at uniform velocity in horizontal direction and at the same time undergoing acceleration in downward direction under the influence of gravity. So there are three types of projectile motion. The first one is horizontal projectile this is when the theta equal to zero degree one of its example is when the cannonball leaves a cliff with horizontal velocity of two meter per second the next type of projectile motion is vertical projectile so vertical projectile is when theta equal to 90 degree so one of its example is when you throw an object upward at an angle 90 degree and the last type of projectile motion is the projectile at an angle theta this is when the theta between 0 and 90 deg degree so now let's have a look into detail about the two components of the projectile motion so just now we talk about horizontal motion and we talk about vertical motion so actually it refers to the x and y components so first the horizontal motion is under constant velocity so when constant velocity acceleration equal to zero and the second one is vertical motion that is y component it is under constant gravitational acceleration where our a y equal to negative 9.81 meter per second square okay so let's have a quick recap on the kinematics equation of linear motion that we're going to use to solve problems related to projectile motion so there are three equations the first one is v equal to u plus a t second one is v square equal to u square plus 2 a s the third one is equal to ut plus half a t square. Okay, so now we discuss into detail how we're going to use the kinematics equation for our projectile motion in which we have x and y component. So we know that for x component, ax equal to 0 and y component, ay equal to negative 9.81 meter per second square. So let's look at the first equation vx equal to ux plus ax t since ax equal to 0 so we cancel ax into 0 so we left with vx equal to ux next equation is vx square equal to ux square plus 2 ax s so same goes ax equal to 0 so we just left with vx equal to ux and the final one is sx equal to ux t plus half ax t square so since our ax equal to zero so we can cancel it and we left with sx equal to ux times with t okay now let's have a look at the y component so we're going to talk about the three same equations so the first one what we need to do is we need to change our ay into negative g since we have negative 9.81 meter per second square. So the first equation is vy equal to uy minus gt and the second equation is vy square equal to uy square minus 2gsy and the last one is sy equal to uyt minus half g t square 
So these are the six equation that we need to remember in order for us to solve equation, uh, sorry, in order for us to solve problems related to projectile motion. Okay, next we move to projectile motion trajectory. So what happened to the velocity at each of the point? Here we have point O, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so each point, we need to know what is the velocity and which direction it move. Okay. And in order for you to solve this one, you need to remember how to resolve a vector. Since our velocity is a vector, so it's going to have x and y component and it's going to have magnitude and direction. Okay, so let's have a look at point O, A and B, where B is our maximum height. Okay, so for point O, the x component we write is as ux equal to u cos theta. And point B, our ux will equal to v2 only. And for point O, get back to the y component, uy equal to u sin theta. And point B, since it is maximum height, so 0 at the x, sorry, y component. So, based on all the information, we can find the magnitude at each point, O, A, and B. The same goes as the direction. So, for the magnitude, we can use Pythagoras theorem. And for the direction, we use, we use shift tan. Okay? Apart from calculating the direction, velocity, and the magnitude, we also need to know how to calculate the maximum height, horizontal range or displacement and the last one is time of flight for an ideal projectile path. So for ideal projectile path, we know that at the maximum height, our velocity at y component must equal to zero. Okay, so here are the three things that usually can be asked in a projectile motion equation. The first one is maximum height, horizontal range, and the third one is time of flight. So in this part, I'm going to discuss how to derive an equation that we can use to calculate these three key words in the ideal projectile path. Okay, so first look we talk about maximum height. Okay, so maximum height is the height from the ground to the maximum point that the ball can reach before it start to fall back to the ground. Okay, so how to find the maximum height? First, we need to identify few information that we need to know from the Y component. Because we know that maximum height relate about the y component, not the x component. So at the y component, we know the initial velocity is uy equal to u sine theta. And at the maximum height, by equal to 0 meter per second. So we can use equation by square equal to uy square minus 2gh, where our by equal to 0. So we left with 2gh equal to uy square. So our h will equal to uy square over 2g. Now we replace our uy with u sine theta. So this is the final equation that we can use to find the maximum height. Okay, next we talk about time of flight. So time of flight is the time taken for an object to fall back to the ground. Okay, so how long it take for it to move from the ground going to the maximum height and back to the ground? Okay, so that refer to the time of flight. So first we need to find what is the time taken for it to reach the maximum height. 
Okay, so how can we find the time taken to reach the maximum height? Okay, we can use Vy equal to Uy minus Gt. Okay, since Vy equal to 0, so we just left with Gt equal to u sin theta. So t equal to u sin theta over g. So time of light will be double of this small t because it the time taken for it to move to the maximum height is the same as the time taken for it to reach the ground. Okay, the last one is horizontal range or the other name is displacement. Okay, so horizontal range from its name, we know that it just talk about the horizontal component. So we just need to remember our x component. So at x component, a equal to 0 and our u equal to u cos theta. So we can apply the equation of sx equal to uxt in which our t is the time of flight. Okay. Okay, so we replace our small t, that is the time of light, with 2u sin theta over g. Okay, so the final equation that we can use to calculate the horizontal range will be r equal to u square sin 2 theta over g. Okay, so that's all. See you again in the next video. Bye!